Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check two new products by Toolkit RC. The first one which I'm going to start with is the P200 gun part adjustable power supply and the second one is the M7 multifunctional charger. While at the first glance the Toolkit RC P200 doesn't look like a very interesting item, it's actually a very capable product that features a USB Type-C output that will enable you to charge your mobile devices and laptops that are using recent charging technologies and it is powered by GAN, which stands for Gallium Nitride, a very efficient semiconductor. In terms of packaging, inside the box along with the P200 power supply you can find a quick start guide, an AC cable, a female XT60 battery connector, which is soldered to 26 cm long 14 gauge silicon coated wires, a USB to USB Type-C cable, and bullet connectors to alligator clips adapter. As for its specs, the P200 is an AC-DC power supply. On DC the maximum output power is 200 watts, and on AC the maximum output power is reduced to 100 watts. The supported AC input voltage is between 100 to 240 volts, the supported DC input voltage is between 7 to 28 volts, the DC input is using an XT60 battery connector, and next to the AC input you can find a switch that only applies to the AC input. On the front side of the P200 you can find a 1.54 inch 240 by 240 color LCD screen, the main output ports that output between 1 to 30 volts, the USB output port that will enable you to charge your mobile devices and also upgrade the framework of the power supply, a power switch and two scroll wheels that will enable you to adjust the output current and voltage. In addition, the P200 weighs 344.4 grams and its outer dimensions are 62.9 by 81.6 by 77.8 millimeters, so it is pretty portable and not as big as you might think. Now I've got a forest battery plugged on the back side of the P200 and short pressing the power button is going to power it up. On the main screen you can see the internal temperature of the P200 and once it's going to reach a certain temperature the built-in fan is going to kick in. When the USB Type-C connector is not in use over here you'll be able to monitor the DC input voltage and once it is in use it's going to indicate USB and next to it you'll be able to monitor the output voltage and output current. Using the voltage and ampere scroll wheels you'll be able to adjust the output voltage and output current. The maximum output voltage is 30 volts and it goes all the way down to 1 volt. The maximum output current is 10 amperes and it goes all the way down to 0.5 amperes. By short pressing the ampere scroll wheel you'll be able to monitor the USB output. Short pressing the voltage scroll wheel is going to turn on or off the main outputs. So now as you can see the main outputs are on. So next to the voltage settings you'll be able to see the actual voltage. And after I'm going to turn it off. As you can see this value is decreasing. And similarly next to the ampere settings you'll be able to monitor the actual output value. By long pressing the voltage scroll wheel button you'll be able to enter the settings menu. So over here you'll be able to adjust the step voltage, the step current, adjust the curve time of the graph which is displayed on the main screen, set the lowest input voltage which applies to both USB Type-C and main ports. So in case the input voltage is going to be below the value that you defined, the USB Type-C port and the main ports are not going to work. Next you can set the set temperature of the P200, so in case the internal temperature is going to exceed this value, both USB Type-C and main ports are going to stop working. You can also adjust the backlight of the LCD screen, adjust the tone of the beeping and also turn it off. Next you can set the language of the user interface, set the theme to white or dark, restore the settings of the P200 to the factory settings, and check the version that you are currently running. In order to go back you can either long press the scroll wheel button or just go all the way up and press back. As for operating the P200 you should note that while the main output port is protected from overcurrent, over voltage and from short circuit it is not going to protect you from reverse polarity and we can all have a moment of silence for this flight controller which I sacrificed in the name of science. In addition, when using the USB Type-C output port for charging your mobile devices, the charging protocol is going to be automatically detected 
and once powered off and connected to a PC, the P200 is going to be discovered as a flash drive and then you'll be able to upgrade its firmware. So overall, the Toolkit or CP200 is definitely not something that everybody needs, but in case you are looking for a portable power supply that is also capable of charging your mobile devices either at home or on the go, it's definitely worth checking. Moving on to the Toolkit RC M7 Multifunctional Charger. This small device will enable you to charge up to 6S batteries and supports most of the common battery types. Its supported DC input voltage is between 7 to 28 volts, its maximum output power is 200 watts, and the maximum current can be set to 10 amperes. The USB port is used for charging mobile devices and also for upgrading the firmware of the charger. And besides being a charger, it will also enable you to measure and output PWM, PPM, and SBUS signals, test the SCs, and serve as a power supply. As for packaging, inside the small box along with the M7 multifunctional charger, you are getting a quick start guide and a USB to USB cable that will enable you to connect the M7 charger to your computer. And then just like the P200 power supply, it is going to be discovered as a flash drive and you'll be able to upgrade its firmware. Here you can see what it looks like after the M7 multifunctional charger is powered up. By long pressing the exit slash function button, you'll be able to access the different functions. First, you'll be able to measure the resistance of the cells of the battery that is connected to the main ports. Then you'll be able to measure PWM, PPM, and SBUS signals, output the same type of signals, test ESCs, and use it as a power supply. Outputting and measuring the different types of signals is done using these two servo connectors. So now I've got an ESC connected to the main port and the signal is connected to the servo connector. The device is actually powered using the output part and now I can navigate to the ESC test option and now I can adjust the signal in order to test the ESC. As for using the charger option, by short pressing the scroll wheel button, you'll be able to access the different options. First, you'll be able to set the battery. Then you'll be able to set the number of battery cells, which can be set either manually or detected automatically. The charging mode can be set to charge, discharge, or storage charge. When it is set to either discharge or storage charge, you'll be able to set the discharge mode. Internally basically means that the battery that is connected is going to be discharged by the charger, and then the power is going to be turned into heat, and this method is limited, so the maximum discharge power is 10 watts. You can set it to recycle and then the power that is going to be discharged from the battery is going to be used for charging the battery that is powering the charger. And you can also set it to external and for that you are going to need to use an external load. Next you can set the end voltage which is determined by the battery type. You can set the charge current and start the charging procedure. While a battery is being charged, using the scroll wheel button you will be able to monitor the voltage per cell, the cell resistance, and by long pressing the scroll wheel button, you'll be able to adjust the current and stop the charging procedure. As for accessing the setup menu, it is done by long pressing the scroll wheel button while not charging a battery. Under this menu, you'll be able to adjust the input settings, adjust the security settings, adjust the backlight of the LCD screen, set the buzzer tone, set the user interface language, set the theme to light or dark, and restore the charger to the default settings. In addition, in case you would like to calibrate the charger, you can do so by holding the scroll wheel button and then power the charger simultaneously. Anyway, I'm not going to get into too many details because I've reviewed similar Toolkit RC products in the past and I think that if you already have something similar, for example like the M6, it might be enough for you, but in case you are looking for an upgrade or you don't have this type of multifunctional charger and it's something that you can use, you should definitely check it out. So that's going to be it for my hands-on review of the Toolkit or CP200 power supply and the M7 multifunctional charger. And as always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.